part of Photoshop's power is that it can help you create anything you can imagine. But how, for example, would you even go about turning this photo into a fun concept? We can select the biplane and then add a new background with puffy clouds. A selection is just a way to isolate part of an image so that you can change that part in some way. For example, let's select the grapefruit and then change its color from orange to yellow. Watch what happens if we try changing the color without first making a selection. In this case, the color change affects the entire image, including the background, which has now changed from green to blue. It's important to understand selections because chances are you'll need to use them in almost all of your creative work. In this tutorial, we'll help you focus on the most important selection tools and why you would use one over the other. But before we take a look at selections in action, it's important to first ask yourself a few questions. What am I trying to select? Is it an object? Is it a person? Is it a sky or a furry animal? The answer will help you figure out which selection method is best. The good news is that for some of these, Photoshop gives you a way to make selection automatically. Let's watch selections in action to understand how they work. For example, you can automatically select the sky with the select sky command and then edit its color. And you can automatically select the main subject in a photo with select subject and then brighten your subject, for example. But what about everything else that doesn't have an automatic selection command? You can use methods like color range or the magic wand tool if your object is all one color. Does your object stand out from the background with a clearly defined edge? If so, try the quick selection tool. Or if you want to select a circle like this plate, Photoshop has dedicated tools for common geometric shapes. But no matter which selection tool you use, there are some key things to keep in mind about how selections work. First, when you make a selection, these animated dashes called marching ants show you what's selected. Second, if your initial selection isn't perfect, you can always add to or subtract from it. Third, did you know that you can use more than one method to create a selection? For example, if you get a selection like this using select subject, you might want to switch to the quick selection tool to add to your initial selection. So let's recap. Selections are great for isolating parts of an image that you want to change. Before selecting, evaluate your image and identify the changes you want to make so you can choose the best selection method for the job. There are ways to select common areas like a sky or main subject automatically. For everything else, you can explore Photoshop selection tools to find one that best suits your needs. Now is your turn. Start this tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions to practice using selections.